David Anderson, welcome. Hi, Patricia. 250 jobs will be lost at the ABC. Can you outline specifically from where they'll come from? Uh, no, Patricia, I can't. Uh, look, we've, we've entered into a process of consultation and proposal that we've put to the organisation. Uh, and it is up to 250 with the proposals that we've gone forward with. Uh, very difficult day for a lot of people at the ABC. Um, but it is something that has been coming for a while now since the indexation freeze was announced in 2018. Which ABC programs and services will be axed completely? You've announced that the flagship 7.45 AM radio bulletin will go. Now, that's a very significant decision. Why this bulletin? I mean, it's the equivalent of cutting the 7 p.m. TV news. Patricia, it was very tough decisions needed to be made in our consideration of this. Um, as we've said previously, we needed to find a run rate of $41 million per annum of savings. We found two thirds of that from third party negotiations and other efficiencies, leaving only a third having to come from content. And when you weigh up all the valuable things that we do, uh, we had a look at our strategy and what we're looking to do. And we're looking to be more local, we're looking to uh, invest in on-demand services. For this particular bulletin, and I, I do understand it is uh, a flagship program and one that's been uh, in the stable of the ABC, I think, since 1939. Uh, but audiences are decreasing. They've been decreasing by up to 20% on recent years, and we can see the pickup of on-demand usage being almost equivalent to that. So not only are we looking to be more local for, for different times on local radio, so we still have a 7 a.m. bulletin for 10 minutes, we still have news chat at 7.30, a new bulletin at 8. And for our local radio presenters to be talking about what is important and what matters to the community you know, for, the, for, the, for the time in between, and to shift resources towards on-demand services, such as news on demand. So in terms of the decision making, though, I just want to be clear on this. Firstly, do you accept it's the equivalent of, of cutting the 7pm TV news? It's the equivalent radio-wise. And what metrics did you use? Is it about ratings? You mentioned the decline. Is that how you made that decision? Uh, it's, not, it's not ratings, it's reach into the Australian population and it's declining faster than all of local radio. But we did look at all of our services, Patricia. We looked at them across uh, all that we do, uh, across television, across radio and across what we do on digital. Uh, when it comes to um, radio, we still have AM, PM, The World Today, News Breakfast, uh, Drive, of course, uh, there are, and there are a lot of ways that you can get your news from the ABC. And so over the years, the 745 Bulletin, is, which it was one of the few ways that you could get news in the morning, now there are other options available to Australians, and so that's why we see that decline in audience that we have for that particular Bulletin. And the trend that we're seeing is that we know that we need to be able to invest in services of the future. The task that we have is to find savings as well as invest in services to the future. There's reports of a review of all programs on the news channel. Is that correct? Uh, no, that's not correct. So that was wording in my email. So uh, the references to news channel is really to reflect uh, the fact that we've already seen a shift uh, in programming for late news and we're putting staff change proposals for today which reflect the editorial changes that have already happened. What about the ABC's digital offering? ABC Life will be no more, you're rebranding that, but I want to be really specific on this. There are a lot of diverse young staff in that area. They're reaching new audiences, which is one of your goals. Why would you get rid of something that's reaching new audiences and that's dealing with one of the key criteria that you've set for yourself, diversity? Diversity is key to the five-year plan. I'll just talk about that first. So uh, it is incumbent upon us right across the ABC to reflect the diversity of contemporary Australia in who we have in our staff and who we have that presents anything on the ABC uh, across all of our platforms, as well as the perspectives we present. Uh, and it can be geographical diversity as well. It can be socioeconomic. Diversity is key if we're going to make sure that we uh, reflect the country back to itself. So I do accept that, yes, that is a team that did have a lot of diverse people that were recruited for it. It came about certainly as an experiment. It was there to find new and younger audiences. Uh, but we did it believe do that, David? Did it achieve that, though? Uh, it did. So it did find uh, new and younger audiences. But we believe that we've got a better proposition 
uh, that actually extends what we do for lifestyle programming, but in a different way. So what we want to do is all those fantastic stories that we have right across the country, so from our regional bureaus uh, particularly, that otherwise are publishing, and they're publishing on an ABC site that is for that station, but they're also publishing on Facebook. We want to be able to pick up those stories and provide them a national platform, stories about connection with community and people's lives, and put that through uh, ABC Local. And we're leveraging, I think it's 68 features reporters that we have across the country. So that's, that's how we're approaching it. And again, we're finding a new proposition while still finding savings. I just want to clarify uh, ABC Life and its rebranding. Uh, one, of, one of its team members has tweeted that half its staff will go. Can you quantify that for me? Uh, again, we're talking numbers, Patricia, uh, in a very sensitive time. It's a very difficult day for a lot of people at the ABC. Uh, but that is, that is an accurate description of uh, what is happening with the ABC okay. Life team. And just to nail it down, sorry, you know I like to do this. If it's half its staff, what is that equivalent to for people watching, listening, who, who don't obviously understand the ABC sort of staffing model? ABC Life started off with a team, uh, I think it was in the high 20s. Uh, over a time, that team reduced in size, and so uh, the, the remainder of that team, uh, it is from within that pool of people that, uh, that people have been consulted with today, Patricia. Okay. I don't really want to go to specifics in that, but it's a very difficult time for a lot of people across the ABC today. Oh, no doubt, absolutely. This is a devastating day for people who support the ABC too. Look, I just want to go into some other issues. You've said in your sort of five-year plan that you will have an even more, it'll have an even more significant impact on services such as consolidating TV channels, radio networks and some regional services in the future. What are you warning about by saying that? What's at risk in the future? What I'm saying in the five-year plan, Patricia, is actually that we're not consolidating networks at the moment. So uh, in the pursuit of $41 million a year, which is a lot of money coming off the back of uh, previous cuts to the ABC that now total 10% of the budget since 2013, uh, we are not consolidating networks, we're not consolidating AM networks uh, or television networks. But I am signalling that I do believe that due to audience evolution in the way that they're engaging uh, with our content, so there's a heavy theme of on-demand that's in our five-year plan and it's shifting investment from what we do on broadcast towards on-demand, uh, that, that in the end, I can see a time when we will be consolidating services, but that's not now. I don't see that happening in the next five years, but I can see planning for that over the next five years, depending on how audiences shift or how fast they okay. shift their behaviour. I just want to be clear on this. You're saying that in the next five years, you won't be cutting off what a channel or a, a radio station? Well, five years is a long time, Patricia, but mm. from what I can see at the moment and the trends I can see, I don't see that happening within five years, but of course um, there might be technology that comes along that, that changes that trajectory that we see at the moment in the shift in audience behaviour. But going on the trends that we can see at the moment, I don't see us consolidating AM networks uh, or television networks. And one thing about the five-year plan, Patricia, is that we have given an absolute commitment here to regional Australia. We're in 48 regional locations and we want to stay in 48 regional locations. So we've um, having to make some tough choices, we're still trying to protect how local we are and part of that plan also suggests that we should be in outer suburban areas as well as in cities. Has the ABC failed outer suburban areas? I think we could do better in outer, outer suburban areas. So not that we've failed, but I think that if we're going to, um, if we're going to reflect the communities that we serve, uh, and we need to be more relevant to more Australians. In order to do that, I think we need to be closer to them. So I'm talking out of suburban areas of, of Sydney, but not just Sydney, uh, Melbourne, Brisbane uh, and Perth, uh, where you see population growth. I think that we are going to need a presence there. And I think over recent months, Patricia, we've proved that we can, uh, that we can adapt and that we can be more mobile about what it is that we do. And so over the next five years, we want to be able to pursue that a lot more. I think it's an important thing to pursue. 75% of content makers should be working outside of the Ultimo headquarters by 2025. My understanding is that the current uh, projection is what, 65%, so you're increasing it by 10%, is that right? What is that, what is that equivalent to in terms of real, real people on the ground? So over the next five years, uh, that's equivalent to about 200 roles. Uh, so we wanted to set an, an achievable target. 
And so it's achieved through many different ways. So it's achieved through either if people left, they're replaced uh, away from Ultimo with very content making role. Uh, we want to see if we can find a greater presence. We do have an office, office here in, in, in Sydney and Parramatta uh, that is it's not very big, uh, but we could increase that presence. There's many ways that we could achieve it. Uh, th or we could have additional roles in content. Patricia, I will say that over the years, we've, when we've not had a budget cut to deal with, we've done well with investing in services for Australians. So News Channel is an investment we made through efficiencies that we found, so was iView, and we put an extra $15 million into regional Australia. So if our budget wasn't declining, we would seek to find those efficiencies. The two thirds of efficiencies I mentioned earlier, I could otherwise put into services uh, for Australians if we didn't have to deal with the, deal with the budget cut. What will it all mean for emergency broadcasting in the future? Because, of course, the, the summer bushfires, even the coronavirus, which we've been covering heavily, in fact, most of my work has been the coronavirus this year. That is emergency broadcasting, and so I view it. How do you view it, and what's the priority on emergency broadcasting? Will we be able to deliver for, for audiences in the way that's expected with these budget cuts? Uh, well, I think the ABC has done an extraordinary job through the bushfire crisis that we had and, of course, now the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I haven't heard anyone at the ABC complain. Everyone has thrown everything at both of those events, from newsrooms to regional bureaus, in fact, right across the ABC. Um, that does come at a cost. It is a cost that uh, I think we will always do. I think emergency broadcasting is something uh, that is part of our DNA. I think it is something that we will always do. So I think that when we look to the future, we do want to make sure that we've got the right resources around that, uh, to make sure we've got the right investment. It's a cost pressure on our budget that everybody knows. Uh, and we'll try to position ourselves uh, through the coming months, actually, in order to, to respond to that, should it rise to that level again. You've decided to scale back independent production by $5 million. That's quite significant, largely from factual and entertainment factual being things like documentaries. So what will the ABC actually commission now? And how big a hit will that be for these really important areas of production? Well, we spend, um, I'm going to go off memory here, uh, upwards of $90 million with the independent production sector. Uh, and what that does is it leverages more money from other places uh, for our audiences uh, here in Australia. And, if, and, and, and the ownership of that is retained with the independent producer so they can perhaps sell it overseas. Um, so the impact here for us is that $5 million uh, out of the in independent production sector uh, means that, that there are some programs that um, may not happen who were in the, that were into development at the moment. It, it, it's hard to say at the moment what that would be. I mean, I'm not in charge of ENS anymore, uh, but, and we also have the disruption of COVID-19. The independent production sector is going through a lot of pain at the moment. They're unable to keep going in production. I think we had disruption for 73 programs. That's across 50 independent producers. And there'll be a delay in when they arrive and there's a delay in the spend as to, as to how that will go. And I think that'll be felt for some time. There's an increase in cost. Uh, there's an increase in cost in quality uh, that audiences are expecting. Uh, so there is already downward pressure on that independent production sector. And I did want to be quite open about the fact that that budget would be going down $5 million year on year. So year on year. So we're talking that what's so what will the cumulative effect be? Oh, well, that's from this year to next year. Mm. Uh, I haven't set the budget for the year after, Patricia, but, but it's but uh, you would expect that to remain flat. OK. Critics of the ABC have argued that savings could be made through the broadcaster's property portfolio. You know this. Some have even mm. argued that the ABC could save money by moving its headquarters out of Sydney. Are those live options for you? No. So what we're looking at, um, what we're looking at is really a good look at our property portfolio. We want to rationalise it. Uh, I do see a selling property in the future, in the near future. We've got a property on the market right now that's in Melbourne. Uh, and, but I do see the reinvestment being in technology, in technology that allows us to deliver on the strategy in order to put ourselves uh, into more communities. Um, I don't think property, the one-off sale of property does not help you with an ongoing budget issue, uh, but it's, you do need to look at it quite closely. I have called out today to the organisation that 
uh, here in Ultimo. Uh, I do want to uh, restack some floors and then rent out floors um, commercially, and part of that is to solve for the budget problem that we have. Uh, in other states, it depends on the building and it depends where we are. We already rent out uh, some of our floor space in Perth, uh, in Hobart, uh, particularly uh, Melbourne, if you include the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. Uh, and I think that it is something that we look at more and more. We need to make sure that we're fit for purpose. Uh, the ABC owns a lot of property around the country. We're in 56 locations. Uh, most of them are owned. So, but we need them. So you, simply selling a property and then hiring another one is an increase in ongoing cost. So you need to make sure that you have an offset for that. Uh, hence, we're looking at trying to rent out some floors here in Ultimo. In terms of sort of the future of who you want to bring in as viewers, uh, newly arrived migrants, migrant communities is what you're identifying. Are you trying to compete with SBS? No, Patricia, we are here for all Australians. So they can be the traditional owners of this ancient land, they can be our newest citizens and everywhere in between. Uh, and we do, we are here for everyone. Uh, SBS has a particular role, but they can't be all the places that we are. So we're not trying to replace anybody. We are simply here uh, to, as I said, reflect the diversity of this country in the way that it exists in its contemporary Australia. And, and it is something we must continue to strive to achieve. In terms of these decisions, are they fixed decisions? Because many people internally at the ABC are particularly upset by this decision to get rid of the uh, flagship news program. They're asking key questions, which I'm now going to put to you. How much are you really going to save by doing that or reinvest? Can you outline those figures and is it a fait accompli? Well, Patricia, uh, there, there is an industrial process we're going through here with regard to consultation, particularly with the people involved. Um, we, uh, we are saving with regard to those changes in the net savings in the end are in excess of a million dollars and that's between the savings that are proposed to be made as well as the reinvestment into on-demand services and there is a saving at the end of it. Again Patricia, I don't want to be um, too callous about this because uh, th this affects people and people who have done great work for the ABC over a great many years and, uh, they've, and they've done tremendous work and, and, uh, and I'm very thankful for the work that they've done. The reality we have though is really a disinvestment in what is broadcast uh, scheduled news uh, and an investment in on-demand news uh, that's available 24-7. You, of course, wanted to be managing director. You're managing director now. Is this your worst day on the job? Possibly, yes. This is a terrible day to be in this job, but this isn't about me. It's about, about the people we serve and it's about um, internally here at the ABC. It's uh, about um, the people who are receiving bad news today and, and, the and, and, and everyone. It's a bad day for everybody, uh, whether it's you or whether it's a colleague. Um, it is, they, they, this is a terrible day. Um, but we will, I think, uh, recover from this eventually. We've got a lot of process to get through here uh, and be there for all Australians into the future. I think what we're trying to do is make sure that the ABC is as important in the future and the important role it plays uh, in, the, in the lives of all Australians uh, as much in the future as it is today. David Anderson, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Patricia. And that's the ABC's managing director, David Anderson, elaborating on this five-year plan. Now, since recording that interview, more ABC staff members have been briefed about where those 250 job cuts will come from. And the news division is set to lose around 70 staff. We understand the entertainment and specialist division, 53 staff, and the regional and local division, 19. But, of course, this is a consultation process, so this is an ongoing issue.